So I've been running into some inconsistent results, and I'm going to change uh, my approach to all this casing business. You can see here I have some king oysters that are only pinning around some of the edges. You can see here there's a lot of area that's not doing anything compared to some of the blocks that I've shown you that had pins all the way over. Here you can see another one that's having problems going all the way around. Where it just, doesn't want to, just wants to pin around the edge and not the center. Or even sometimes it pins somewhat in the center, but uh, it doesn't make nearly as mu many mushrooms as it should. I'm probably only getting about a pound or less off some of these. And I believe the issue is, is that for one, I need to use my, my thumb to wipe out the mycelium growing up the interior of the bag. So it looks like this where there's just clear plastic showing and not mycelium growing up. Because that mycelium on the edge is what hits the light first and fruiting conditions first so it tends to uh, get all the stimulus to pin while the center doesn't do much. Now here are some that you can see uh, kind of like almost a large mat of uh, just thousands of pins that I let develop while they were in their blue tubs and uh, my son was growing through the casing mix. Um, I was letting it go for longer and longer, uh, letting more pins build up, um, but I'd still have problems where it would just thinly colonize the top and sometimes and other times I worked out right, so I was trying to figure out, well, why am I getting such inconsistent results? And I believe it to be uh, the mycelium growing up the side, but more so that I'm just waiting too long to case these. And when I'm casing them, I'm using too much mix. So what I've done now is I'm going back to the standard 14 days after I've made the bags. They go down. Uh, into the basement, no uh, waiting in tubs or anything. Um, I've noticed after 14 days that you'll actually uh, see some pinning starting at the top of the block when you uh, cut open the bag. So they're definitely ready to go. And I also have to take into account that I'm using coffee with this, which in my experience speeds up the fruiting process. And a lot of this I've been doing by the book. So uh, I'm probably getting faster results than that and it's uh, kind of holding me back I believe. But now these new blocks I'm wiping the interior of the plastic off so there's it's all clear. Leaving a little bit more plastic on it too so I have a little bit higher sides to work with because uh, another issue I was having was that these blocks could grow together. Um, you kind of see right here they would grow out and the mycelium even though it's producing fruits, the fruits will uh, grow together and then you have to kind of rip the block apart from the other one and sometimes uh, it tears off a chunk of the other's casing mix and kind of makes a big hassle getting it out of there. But yeah, I'm wiping the sides off so that prevents any uh, blocks from growing between each other. Or, or too, if you, know, if you keep finding that problem, you can always stagger your blocks with uh, second flush blocks so there's always a mushroom block that's not having mushrooms growing on it next to one that is uh, full so it never has that chance but anyhow now I only put one large handful of casing mix on top and just spread it really thin and put it down here immediately actually I put the casing mix on it down here it's, it just makes it easier I don't have to use my lab space for uh, all this messy work um, but you can see here it's working out there's pins coming up right through it. And when I do this too, I actually kind of leave a, a few bald spots of the top of the block showing just so it gets started. It'll pretty much have to when you're using that thin of a casing layer. But so far, with that thin of a layer, it hasn't dried out. It actually hydrates greater because with the same amount of misting, there's less mix to absorb that water. So it uh, sat really saturates what's there. But I believe this is what I, I need to get it to work properly because uh, there's a uh, common rule with all mushrooms that it, the longer you wait to fruit it, 
it runs the chance of uh, the mycelium dying back as if it was in nature and decided that it didn't have the uh, proper conditions to get started. So that's most likely what's going on. And that would explain how some blocks that I put down here uh, originally did better just because I wasn't waiting as long for pins to form while the casing was colonized. And two, when I'm removing the first flush, although I imagine those won't look like uh, these style where it has a big mat that tears off so easily and, and uh, easy chunks like you know, just a couple rips. Um, yeah, when I have the second flush ready to go and the block is bald, I again put just one handful of casing mix back on it and spread it really thin. Some too I've noticed that you can't uh, hold on to the casing mix after you cook it for more than maybe like two or three days. Otherwise, uh, if it's wet towards the bottom, it'll start getting uh, anaerobic bacteria forming and start producing a, a funky scent. So make sure you smell your casing mix before you apply it. Um, and too, if you're probably making it on the drier side, you could probably keep it longer. But that's good news that I got pins forming, so let's check back in in a few days. Well, it's been several days, and for the most part, these look like they're doing pretty good. I do notice there's a, uh, a consistent thing where you can see, for instance, this bag where there's not a lot of action going on top, but there's a whole lot of pins forming in between the plastic just underneath the casing layer. That seems to be a problem. It's uh, stealing away from the flush, not letting as many mushrooms get up, <clears throat> get up above the casing mix. So what I'm going to do on the next bags is still keep a very thin layer of casing on top, but really pack it into the side so there's just no, no open space and nowhere for these uh, extra pins to grow. And you can tell that, uh, for instance, this one over here that doesn't have any of the side pinning. You see here it's pretty absent of it, but a lot more mushrooms coming out the top. Looks like it'll make a, a proper flush. So, you know, I'm still working on all of this. But you can see that, for the most part, they're coming in the top. Now I think I might only still be able to get a pound and a half on the first flush doing this style just because it's fruiting so fast. But I'm going to try boosting the amount of alfalfa I use and hopefully that will uh, increase the productivity and also hopefully too not create too much heat as it colonizes. I haven't noticed any heat problems while colonizing the bag so I think I can get away with it. And in my experience, you can bump that alfalfa up pretty high. I think at one point in time I was using about uh, one quarter of total weight supplementation with it. So that's quite a bit. And of course when I did it too, that, that heated up quite a bit too. So I just have to experiment. Um, I think too there's probably an optimal day as far as time period to put them down. You can see these blocks were um, made about two, three days ahead of these ones. These ones were made 515. These ones were made 520. And I kind of relatively put everything down here at the same time because that's when I realized that it was best to take them out of the tubs. So maybe letting them go for a few more days is a little extra productive because these ones look like they're being a bit more productive. So I might extend it to maybe like uh, 16 or 17 days colonizing before I open the tops, bring them down here and give them the casing. I just have to keep track and keep uh, experimenting. Now these ones over here too were the ones that I let grow through the top and then wiped out the edges. And they're actually not doing too bad, but I think I'll still get better results with the other method. So, we'll check in another time here uh, with the next bags, see if I can get rid of that side pinning, and uh, improve these results once again. I put down these new blocks into the basement, 
And now you can see that I'm taking the casing mix and really packing it in, in between the plastic and the block. Now some of these, where I've kind of squished them into the shelves as they colonize, put a lot more slack in the plastic around it. So you have to use a bit more casing mix. I'm now using about three medium handfuls to, on some of these to really jam it in there. And then once I get it jammed in with my fingertips, I scrape back the top where you can see several patches of the uh, bulb mycelium there. And hopefully that will give me all the, uh, the triggers to pin it in the center rather, ha rather than having all that pinning around the edge. Now, you can see these ones that were grown before where they had a lot of this pinning around the edge because I just loosely put one handful of casing mix on top and a lot of pins going everywhere here where there's slack. A lot of them are having this, the old problem of too few mushrooms, too larger mushrooms. I mean, I'm getting, you can see how big that sucker is and I'm probably still gonna cut that down tonight, otherwise it's gonna get even larger. Um, but I'm gonna, by removing these uh, pins that go and grow in between the plastic and get aborted, I think I can fix that issue because this one back here I already harvested from. If you remember, it had a, a good pin set coming out, not a lot of pins underneath the plastic, um, and produced uh, pretty much how I wanted it to. You see here too, I had some problems with some of these bags where it's way too wet in the bottom. They didn't mix well for one, and it won't colonize the bottom because it's so saturated wet. And they did some poor flushes. And that's because uh, even though I'm doing an hour and a half cool down in my pressure cookers, I'm still getting some issues where the pressure is uh, too fast of a release and it causes the water in the cooker to get pressed into the uh, seams of the plastic of the bag um, or even just boiled over the top of the bag. And it uh, eventually gets into it and gets the sawdust wetter than I would like it. But I fixed that issue by now placing three quart jars on their sides in the pressure cooker so it raises the metal grate about three inches. So you now have the water, the jars, then the grate. Then I put foil over the grate so the bags don't kind of creep into or around the rungs of the grate and uh, pinch it because I had that problem. But now with the, uh, the bags uh, all situated on top of that, there's no chance of water getting in there and uh, I've been happy with the results. They've all been consistently uh, the right uh, amount of moisture in it, nothing too wet. But although some of these look like they're doing okay, I still want to get rid of that problem. And I really think that uh, packing the casing mix in like this is going to do it. Also too, I'm doing a little experimentation where I put down some bags that were only eight days old and just pr pretty much colonized to the point where the, my son was running up the plastic high enough that I could cut through it without cutting into uncolonized sawdust on the side of the plastic. Now there's another one there. So a couple that are eight days old. And then I also have a couple of them. Let's take a pair where I put them. Yeah, right here. That are uh, much older. They're about 17 days old before I uh, put them down here. So. I want to get a see if there's a sweet spot. Um, I am kind of thinking though that if I'm going by how the cottonseed and straw logs were, where it pretty much fruits when it uh, first has the chance, where it's, you know it'll fruit as soon as it has all the triggers, which is fresh air and light for the most part. Um, so I'm thinking that maybe putting it down here at eight days, you know, just as soon as you can cut through the plastic safely and not get uncolonized sawdust on your scissors and on top of the block real bad, that uh, the earlier the better. So we're going to figure out which is the best. And so I'll check in a few days here and we'll see how the pin sets are coming up out of all of these.